Some years ago, while I was serving in the Navy and, of course, was away from home, a very prominent and well-to-do farmer died in my neighborhood. When I returned home, I was talking with a cousin of mine about the estate of the deceased, and I asked the inevitable question, how much did he leave? My cousin said, he left it all. He didn't take anything. <laughs> He didn't take anything with him. That struck me as being a very, very great truth that few men seem ever really to comprehend. Certainly, many of us act as though we're going to take, take it all with us when we go. Of course, we are not. In terms of material things, each of us leaves it all. In the words of Paul to Timothy, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Well, isn't there anything good that we can take with us when we go, someone might ask? The prophet Joseph Smith taught that the knowledge and intelligence gained here in this life would go with us when we leave. And if a man gains more knowledge and intelligence in this life through his diligence than another, then he will have so much the advantage in the world to come. There is a law irrevoc irrevocably decreed in heaven before the foundations of this world, upon which all blessings are predicated. And when we obtain a blessing, or any blessing, from God, it is by obedience to that law upon which it is predicated. This being true, it would seem that we all should place the pursuit of light and truth or intelligence uppermost in our selection of goals because we're going to have them eternally. We must seek after enlightenment since the glory of God is intelligence. If we would be like our Heavenly Father, then our course is fixed. Ignorance is expensive. In fact, it is the most expensive commodity that we know anything about. Certainly, we many times make mistakes through ignorance. If it is a violation of a commandment of God, which we have never received and thus do not know, then the Lord does not hold us guilty of the sin. To him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. And in Paul's words, where no law is, there is no transgression. But even though we may not be guilty of a sin because of our ignorance, neither can we receive the blessing which is predicated on obedience without rendering obedience to that law. Therefore, we are denied the blessing through our ignorance. If it is a traffic law that we have violated through ignorance, the penalty assessed us is exactly the same as if we had known. Also, if we stick our finger in an electric light socket, we get the same shock irrespective of our knowledge of electricity. I repeat, ignorance is expensive. Particularly is this true since the Lord has decreed it is impossible for a man to be saved in ignorance. Ignorance. For surely no man is truly enlightened unless he knows the Lord. Why is it that we are so slow to learn, to receive the light? Is it because the Lord is slow to speak or he doesn't want to be bothered? Not according to his words to James, wherein he says that he giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not. Then the real problem is that we receive not the light. And this is the condemnation, saith the Lord, because that which was from the beginning is plainly manifest unto them, and they received not the light. And every man whose spirit receiveth not the light is under condemnation. But why do we receive not the light? The Lord tells us over and over again in the, scripture, in the scriptures. Simply stated, the reason we do not learn is because we are not in condition to learn. 
We are not in condition to receive the light because we are not willing to receive it. We just plain don't want it. Now, I'm sure that most of us would violently disagree with this statement. No, of course uh, we want the light, we say. We all want light and knowledge from our Heavenly Father. Still, the words of the Lord are true. In speaking of those who would be resurrected from the dead but would not receive a degree of glory, he said, and they who remain shall also be quickened. Nevertheless, they shall return again to their own place to enjoy that which they are willing to receive because they were not willing to enjoy that which they might have received. For what doth it profit a man if a gift is bestowed upon him and he received not the gift? Behold, he rejoiceth not in that which is given unto him, neither rejoices in him who is the giver of the gift. Then Cassius' words to Brutus and Shakespeare's Julius Caesar apply equally to us. Our faults, dear Brutus, are not in our, in our stars, but in ourselves that we are underlings. We must look to ourselves for the reason for our ignorance. We are prone to say that we are waiting on the Lord to receive light and truth, when as a matter of fact, the Lord is waiting on us, waiting for us to get in condition so he can reveal the light which we seek and so desperately need. The Lord has well stated our plight, and this is the condemnation, that light is come unto the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds are evil. I repeat, because their deeds are evil. Revelation, light, and knowledge come through the power of the Holy Ghost. The words of the Master as recorded in John are expressive. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. And again, he, the Holy Ghost, will guide you unto all truth and shall show you things to come. In fact, we can neither teach nor learn gospel truths without the Holy Ghost. In this day, the Lord has confirmed this great truth in these words. Therefore, why is it that ye cannot understand and know that he that receiveth the word by the Spirit of truth receiveth it as it is preached by the Spirit of truth? Wherefore, he that preacheth and he that receiveth understand one another, and both are edified and rejoice together. And that which doth not edify is not of God and is darkness. That which is of God is light. And he that receiveth light and continueth in God receiveth more light. And that light groweth brighter and brighter into the perfect day. Wherefore, he is possessor of all things. For all things are subject unto him, both in heaven and on earth. The life and the light, the power and the spirit, sent forth by the will of the Father through Jesus Christ, his Son. But no man is possessor of all things, except he be purified and cleansed from all sin. And if ye are purified and cleansed from all sin, ye shall ask whatsoever thing or whatsoever you will in the name of Jesus, and it shall be done. A great Book of Mormon prophet, Alma, after preaching a great sermon on obedience under the influence of the Holy Ghost, stated in part how he received such knowledge and power. Behold, I say unto you, they are made known unto me by the Holy Spirit of God. Behold, I have fasted and prayed many days that I might know these things of myself. And now I do know of myself that they are true. For the Lord God hath made them manifest unto me by his Holy Spirit. And this is the spirit of revelation which is in me. Sometimes members appear to feel that fasting and prayer is all that is necessary to receive the answers to their problems. 
Some time ago, a young lady came into my office concerned because she had fasted and prayed for two days to know if a certain young man should marry her. And she felt that she had received an answer in the affirmative. Shortly thereafter, the young man became engaged to another girl. Her question to me was, how can this be, since I received the answer that he should marry me? Upon further interview, it became apparent that there were a number of commandments which she was certainly aware of, but was not keeping. It takes more than fasting and prayer. We must begin again. We must repent. We must confess and forsake our sins. We must study the scriptures. Yea, search the scriptures. We must keep the commandments of God and keep them precisely. For the commandments are calculated to get us into condition where we can receive light and truth, even intelligence, which is the communication from God our Father we most desperately need and is the only real thing of worth or thing of real worth that we can take with us when we go. May I bear witness, my brothers and sisters, to you that what you have heard from this place in this conference is the mind of the Lord, the will of the Lord, and the word of the Lord for the salvation of his saints at this particular, particular juncture in time. We must give heed to the word of the Lord. We must live his commandments and work out our salvation with fear and trembling before him as we precisely keep these commandments. May it be said of us when we depart from this earth, that he took with him a clean, free, enlightened, and happy spirit, and a conscience void of offense to his fellow men, that this may be our happy state. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.